is dry poured concrete just as good as the regular wet poured concrete? Stick around, you need to hear what I say in this video. So dry poured concrete, it's this new fad, you know, a TikTok thing that's going around. Actually, it's not new at all. Lazy fence post installers have been pouring dry concrete powder into post holes for years, sprinkle some water on it. It's just as good, boss. What's the problem? Let's talk about the technical reasons why this is inferior, lazy workmanship, which will not result with the same quality of finish that a traditional concrete mix and placement will. In a word, if I had to say the one thing that's the real problem here, it's going to be compaction, consolidation. You can't get the same level of consolidation from your concrete material with a dry mix as you can with a wet, not even with manual tamping or anything like that. It is simply not going to happen. A flowable concrete product, which is, it's made that way by design for placement, so we can place it into a mold and then vibrate it. And what's going to happen here is that you're going to have the absolute minimum amount of honeycombing. Honeycombing are the voids or hollow pockets that are left after you pour concrete. And it's well known within the world of concrete working that if your mix is too dry or you don't vibrate it enough, you're going to end up with a bunch of these, these hollow pockets or honeycombing. And that's definitely a deficiency. It looks bad, but it also compromises the strength of the concrete. It also compromises its water permeation ability. So really you're compromising the longevity of it as well. So you're manually compacting this dry material, trying to get, you know, a full consolidation with no air left at all. And then you add water on top of that and then it gets hard and that's it. It's just as good, right? It's definitely not as good. You fail to achieve the same level of consolidation that you do from placing a plastic material like wet concrete. Furthermore, we vibrate wet concrete because even being a liquid alone isn't enough. That's already way better than dry concrete, but it's still not good enough for a concrete finisher. They would vibrate that material to get something called encapsulation. In addition to consolidating the material so there's no honeycombing, generally speaking, we add something like steel into concrete mixes to increase the tensile strength. Concrete is very strong or very high in compressive strength, but very low in tensile strength. So we embed something with very high tensile strength, steel commonly, into the concrete, and it enhances the physical properties of the concrete slab that we're pouring. But it only works if you have encapsulation. Encapsulation is the term for where the concrete is under the steel, but also over the steel, all the way around the steel, grabbing onto it everywhere with no space or room at all. That is encapsulation, and that concrete will be achieving a higher tensile strength because of the steel in it. You simply cannot compact the dry material around a, a rebar or steel wire and achieve full encapsulation because you need the plastic watery material to move and flow upwards and contact the underside of all that steel. Otherwise, you're going to have shadowing in your steel. So any mix at all that has steel in it can't be poured dry because you simply can't achieve encapsulation. So we've already talked about how you're not consolidating it properly, you're not encapsulating the steel, but still it gets worse than that. The top of it, the part that you have to look at for the next 50 years, hopefully, you can't get a good finish on that with a dry mix pour. You simply cannot. Even a wet mix pour takes a little bit of skill in terms to get, you know, a nice flat smooth finish on the top of it. And the average person who's just working with concrete, you know, once or twice in their lifetime, they're really going to struggle to get a nice finish on top of that. And that's probably one of the reasons you're looking towards dry pouring this concrete. I mean, it's easier because you're not having to mix it, but it's also easier because it's essentially flat already. So you're not really even doing any finishing of the surface. Even if you do some finishing of the surface, again, with all this honeycombing and air pockets, you're not going to be able to get a true smooth finish to it. So now we've got concrete that's not as strong. It's not encapsulating the steel. The surface looks bad visually, but it's also porous and pockmarked, which allows a greater water permeability. Water permeability kills concrete. This is what kills concrete. Very slowly over time, as water passes through concrete, the Portland cement component will dissolve and pass along with that water, leaving behind only the aggregates, a rough, sandy, weakened surface. And that's exactly what happens. So you have a dry, sandy, porous surface to your 
concrete slab that you've dried poured, it's basically a big concrete sponge. It's going to absorb water very readily. And what that means, it's going to experience advanced rates of decay. It will not have a longevity anywhere near to a properly mixed, placed and finished wet poured concrete. It's going to be too full of holes. It's going to absorb water. The cement is going to wash away over time and five to 10 years maximum, you're going to find that concrete slab that you dry poured is crumbling and falling apart. If it doesn't just do that when you pull the forms initially. Look, I get it. Mixing concrete is a little bit of hard work, but the truth is, is that the hardest parts are really something that you can bypass with just a proper technical process. Something like simply starting your mix with water and Portland cement, mixing that together, whether in a wheelbarrow or in a bucket with a drill and a whip or whatever the case is. Portland cement and water mixed together, then add your sand on top of that. Keep adding sand until you achieve the desired consistency that you're looking for. If I, I can mix up five gallons of this mortar or concrete in 30 to 60 seconds, it's really not that much work to do. So you're not saving as much time as you think you are by dry pouring this stuff in the first place, and then you're compromising it entirely. It really is just lazy workmanship. It, it, they call it a hack because, I don't know, it is a hack. It's not something that I would allow for at my house. It's not something I would ever do professionally. And I've worked with every kind of concrete application you can pretty much imagine from very little desktop decorative stuff all the way up to I owned a company that where we did shotcrete applications, which is a shoulder mounted concrete cannon. So to say that I have done a lot in the world of concrete would be a relative understatement. And I am telling you, you should not be dry pouring your concrete. It's not a good idea. I hope you found this information helpful.